Hey YouTube, I'm Nick from Nick282K and today I'm going to answer some of your questions about my fair fluid videos. The most asked question I had about my fair fluid videos was where do you get ferro fluid? The easy and cheap answer is you buy it. You can manufacture your own ferro fluid. Uh, it requires uh, sourcing and buying a bunch of chemicals. Uh, some of them are easy to find, some of them aren't. But altogether, you're going to end up spending more time and more money manufacturing your own ferro fluid than it is just to buy it. I bought my bottle off of eBay. It was uh, four ounces, and it cost me thirty-five dollars plus shipping. That's the uh, really the cheapest and easiest way to get a hold of it. A number of users asked me, "How did I get the ferro fluid to react to music?" I'm going to show you my setup. Now most of the pieces here are just what I had laying around. You can substitute parts as you have them or as you need them. As an audio source I'm using my old W500 ThinkPad along with a 3.5mm to RCA adapter. This adapter lets me send the audio from my laptop out to my stereo receiver. For the stereo receiver any generic unit will work as long as it has an auxiliary input or a tape input or phono input and it has a speaker output you can use this to drive your coil in order to make the ferrofluid react. For the coil I used a quarter 20 bolt and some 30 AWG wire. I looked up the resistance per foot of 30 AWG wire online and then worked up how much uh, wire I'd need to uh, make an 8 ohm coil that's not the proper way to do impedance matching but for my purposes it'll work okay I push the coil underneath the uh, little plastic dish I'm using to hold my ferrofluid and then sent my audio signal into it one user asked if I could expose the ferrofluid to a sweep of audio frequencies I'm gonna start at 100 Hertz because above that the ferrofluid seems to just clump up and not really move very much I'm going to work my way down to 1 Hz over a period of 10 seconds. I'm going to film this at normal speed and I'll play the sweep along the side so you can hear it and then I'm going to record it in high speed and play it back so we can see if there's anything going on that wasn't visible in the normal speed. left hand side I have the instantaneous voltage output shown on an oscilloscope. This will give you uh, a voltage positive or negative across the coil. Uh, that gives you an idea of the magnetic field that's coming out of the coil. In the audio track I have the same sweep being played but not adjusted for time. At the beginning it starts at 100 Hertz and at the end it stops at 1 Hertz but the time has been extended. If I had slowed down the audio in the same way that I had slowed down the video, uh, it would start so low a frequency that you wouldn't be able to hear it. So at the beginning you hear 100 Hertz and you are seeing the 100 Hertz reaction of the ferro fluid, but it has been slowed down 20 times. And at the end you hear a 1 Hertz tone and you see the reaction of the ferrofluid at 1 Hz but the video is slowed down 20 times and the audio is at the same rate you hear a 1 Hz tone. It's uh, not really true to what you're seeing but it's a little easier to experience. Had I slowed down the audio you wouldn't have heard anything right from the beginning.
I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that the 1 hertz tone at the end of this video didn't do any damage to your speakers. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.